Hi everybody, welcome to The Remedy. Hi, I'm your host, Tony Pentel Rusco, and you're listening to us live in the Micro Effect Broadcasting Network. You can access the show by typing in www.themicroeffect.com, then click on the appropriate links, the chat room links, come on in, make friends, get acquainted, solve some issues, save the planet, you know, come up with some great ideas. Um, I'm also published all over. You can go to buybybluesky.com, Gag Canada, or just do a just general search on the ser- on the internet, and you'll find me somewhere, someplace, somehow. Uh, I wanted to read something to everybody tonight. Uh, I just got this a little while ago. <laughs> it's it's funny but sad at the same time. The soy boy effect. <clears throat> U.S. Army general says. Um, New recruits not strong enough to throw grenades. Can you imagine that? This is what's going into the U.S. military today. One day may have to protect the integrity of the autonomy of the country that they represent. The United States Army will no longer require recruits to show they can throw a hand grenade 25 meters because many of them can't throw the explosive far enough. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, because when I was, by the time I was 11 years old, I could throw a, a baseball, the length of a baseball field, just about. And here we are, <laughs> about 80 feet is what they're asking them to throw a grenade. Anyway, the Army says that starting next summer, it will remove the requirements from its basic combat training because it takes too much time to teach enlistees to throw grenades at an adequate distance. The new policy was reported by the military.com. Okay, my point. <laughs> Oh boy, I tell you, I'm ready for the bush. I am so ready. We are dealing with today genetic damage. That's why they can't do this. You know, that's why uh, they they uh, they can't do this. They cannot. Um, they cannot. Uh, you know, function the way they're supposed to because their genetic code has been completely. Um, uh, completely gone. The, um, the the whole the whole idea that today we're thinking that we're eating things that have some sort of substantiation to them. Everything better be reevaluated. Anybody who's listening to anything today in regard to what is considered, um, yeah, yeah, we removed the requirement to throw a grenade. <laughs> We win. <laughs> oh boy! But you know, in today's military, in all fairness, in all fairness, the soldiers today are not going to be using conventional weapons like they used to. Anyway, they're not going to be using grenades. They're not going to be using. They may not even be using uh, the rifles that they're carrying today. I, from what I've seen of some of the latest hardware that they're coming up with for these guys, they don't need to have any real power to do much. Uh, other than carrying the equipment, which are now equipping these guys with what they call exoskeletons, which will allow them to carry 80 and 100 pound packs for miles and miles and miles without even uh, get beginning to get any kind of fatigue. So warfare is going to take on a whole new meaning. The uh, AI bots that they're building, they can now build bots that can go in and do what the platoon of soldiers can do. So this is an alarming thing, and I'm talking and I'm trying to make a comparison and analysis here we are becoming diminished by the day every generation that's coming forth from the loins of us is getting weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker meanwhile the hardware they're building is becoming stronger and smarter that does not equate to a longevity of a species in, on any level, on any country, in any continent. The point I'm trying to make here is that we have to be more prepared in terms of defending our genetic code and our DNA and our bloodlines. And our bloodlines, not only with what we feed them, how we train them, how we, how we teach them, and what they have to learn today in the year 2018, 2019, 2020. Okay? We can no longer think in terms of conventional arms. 
Your guns today are going to be obsolete because the technology that they're developing today, today will stop bullets. Bullets won't even penetrate carbon nanotubes. Won't even go near it. It'll, won't even scratch it. Imagine having a bot coming at you, and you got you got a thirty odd six, and you shoot the thing at point blank range, and the only thing you did is piss this thing off. Imagine that. Imagine un understanding that you have a swarm coming in from the sky that may have your genetic code, your DNA, your uh, chromosome code, everything about you, and is now zeroing in on you with a kill ratio of 100% kill. How do you defend against that? You can't even shoot it. It's moving so fast. You'd have to understand the concept of electromagnetic fields, electromagnetic field pulsing, and developing magnetic beams that will knock some of these things out of the sky. That's where you have to start educating and teaching and training because you can't keep on thinking in terms of conventional warfare. They're going to give you all the guns you want and all the bullets you want. They don't care. They've got better and far more sophisticated things that could take you out and you won't even know you're dead. So like I said, but the point in, on that aspect is too, when you have bloodlines who have no DNA construct whatsoever, no genetic code whatsoever to, uh, to speak of, that's been compromised and it's been weakened and has been made to be basically jelly uh, with a foundation. You know, this this is where we're, it's going. I talked, we... Um, Yes, I was doing an interview, a co-interview with uh, Bye Bye Blue Sky, uh, and we were talking about this very topic in terms in terms of um, uh, in terms of uh, genetics, and we we're mentioning how the food supply right now has got nanotechnology in it, bio nanotechnology, synthetic biology. So when we're looking at um, when we're when we're looking at the um, the aspect of what we're eating today, that's in, embedding in us materials that are causing DNA damage exponentially. Okay, and then we're talking about adding transgenics into the food supply, genetic materials into the food supply, being exposed to epigenetics. This is the disaster for a for any kind of culture, any kind of people. Uh, any part of mankind here. So it's up to you to really be aware of this, what's going on, and then start to rethink what you think is safe. Even the vitamins that we're buying today, a lot of them are loaded with garbage. And I wouldn't feed a lot of these things to, to a pig. Period. A lot of them have excipients in them that actually weaken the body instead of strengthen the body. A lot of these things have components in them that actually cause more genetic damage. So again, you have to be conscious about what you're consuming today, what you're exposing yourself to today. We're dealing with frequencies today. All kinds of them. And we're not just getting hit, hit with one or two. We're getting hit with a plethora of frequencies that are constantly uh, uh, breaking down our cellular matrix and our DNA. If you sit there and really analyze what's going on today, we are already at war. And we are at war with those who are developing this technology, hitting us with frequencies, hitting us with scalar waves, hitting us with quantum waves, hitting us with uh, photons, cymatics, hitting us with frequencies of all kinds, trying to cause us to become disruptive, trying to cause us to break down, trying to cause us to yield. And this is all being done through an artificial intelligent program operation. AI will single you out. AI will target you. If you're hearing these guys talking about how AI isn't so advanced, this is insanity. Let me point something out to some of you. They are talking now about regulating artificial intelligence. And the reason why they're talking about this is because this is to pacify an ignorant population. A population that's generally just stupid to what's really going on. And I'm going to put it to you that way in a very salt of the earth way because a lot of you are stupid. You're assuming that everything's all right in the world. In your world, nothing is bad. In your world, everything is come see, come saw. Some of you have never had any kind of tribulation or, or tests in life, which amazes me. Because, I mean, I, I can't figure out how that, how that even happened. But anyway, it did for some of you. 
So some of you don't have any any concept in regard to real hardship. And as much as I hate to say this, the United States and Canada both need to have a war hit them to wake people up from the lethargy that they have and this complacency and this assumption that everything's all right even with their government because the government is our worst enemy and the banks. And everybody know anybody who's awake knows this. So I'm not saying something that isn't true. They're our worst enemy and yet we sustain, we supply both of them with our income, which is another oxymoron. You know, really when you sit there and think about it, you take your money to the bank, you pay taxes to a government which are illegal. We all do it on some level. You know, you don't have to put your money in the bank and you can avoid paying taxes if you know how to do that. But the point is, when we're looking at artificial intelligence and nanobiology, nanotechnology, synthetic biology, and we begin to understand really what is going on, when they're coming out and telling everybody, Elon Musk and some of these other jackasses are telling you that they, now we want to regulate artificial intelligence. We want to keep artificial intelligence on the straight and narrow. Now I'm going to correlate artificial intelligence with us. A lot of us believe in some kind of God. Whatever, whoever you attribute to God, you believe in some kind of God. And all of you have some kind of book, whether it be a Quran, a, a Torah, uh, a Bible, uh, the book of Golgotha, some scripture, Sanskrit writings, uh, Buddhist writings, whatever it is you, you are following. In these books, we have precepts that God, or whatever you're believing, has ordained to be the way to live. To conduct yourself among other people in a proper and appropriate way. But it doesn't mean because it's written that people are listening. Or that people are paying attention. Or people are actually obeying what they're reading. Okay? Now that's human nature to uh, disregard whatever or to accept whatever. Now artificial intelligence, as of seven years ago, maybe more, had the ability to write its own program. In other words, it could upgrade itself, it could write its own programming, it can do what it had to, it could do whatever it wanted to do in its upgrade. A week ago, they found that the artificial intelligence had made a decision on a financial matter that they have no idea how it came to that conclusion that it did. They have no idea how, wh why it did what it did based on how it came up with it. They don't even know the algorithm that it used to come up with the formula that it did in order to figure out what it did. Have no idea. Because the artificial intelligence has been writing its own subroutines and algorithms and programs and the programmers don't even know what it's doing. They said to, to initiate a, a, a diagnostic on the script that it wrote for itself, the first one would take 25 years to dissect and analyze what it did. Now we have a system that can write its own programming. In other words, it can do whatever it sees fit. It will base its, its decisions on how, whatever facts it extrapolates and puts together to make its final decision. And whether human life or, or mankind's life is at stake or not makes no difference. If this is the logical way or this is the most efficient way to get something done, if you have to crack a couple eggs, crack a couple of eggshells to make a couple eggs, oh well, c'est la vie. You know, acceptable losses is what the military would call, call this. So now we put in the regulations to regulate artificial intelligence. It now writes, writes a subroutine and says, well, we'll listen to this if we want to. In other words, there is no control factor. It's too late. This should have been in, embedded at the very beginning and embedded in such a way that it couldn't rewrite that code. It couldn't change the code. Now it's too late. So whenever you're seeing these, this kind of thing going on on the internet and they're trying to propagate and propose you know, some kind of saving program that now they can in, in, um, incorporate into its script to make it work better, okay, work more effectively, you, you can if you actually analyze what they're doing, they're just pacifying you with BS. Can't be done. It won't be able to be done. The only way you're going to take that network down is you literally would have to fry every circuit, every connection, every link it has, anything that's, that is uh, technical 
or, uh, or computerized or programmable would have to be removed or torched. In other words, your refrigerator, if it has a capacity to run memory and store a program, it can hide in that. If your television has these chips, it can hide in that. I was watching a movie there, The Black Panther. It was an interesting scenario that they showed where they could take a piece of hardware, connect it to a car. That car now would produce a hologram somewhere else and then somebody else could actually drive that car that was, was stationed in another country even. That's not that far-fetched. That technology does exist. And the only reason that technology could even work is because your cars all have computer chips in them. If a police officer wanted to drive by you and turn off your car, all they'd have to do is hit a kill switch. They would read the identification number on your car. It would pull up on a, a schematic of the computer programmed or operating system that you're running and then they could turn it off right from there. So much for autonomy. So much for freedom. So these things are being taken away from you from under your nose. Your freedom is being taken away from you with different things that they're adding. Technology things are adding to the consumer products you're buying so that they can control these products. Can you imagine somebody hacking your house through your technology because now they can access the sequence or the codes or operating your equipment in your home, your refrigerator, your television, your stereo, your freezers, your stoves, your lights. Your lights now having LED allows any, any government agency or anybody with a computer capacity to be able to access the LEDs and they can triangulate where you are in your home anytime, any place they want to. So much for using LED um, uh, efficient energy. This was all done by Al Gore to screw the population to get rid of your tungsten bulbs which I would tell you to go back and get and get the halogen bulbs and dump these LEDs. These LEDs will allow these frequencies to modulate through your home and they'll be able to target you. A lot of you can't sleep at night, a lot of you are feeling like you're being assaulted or your, your thoughts are being corrupted or you're, you're being hit with some kind of transmission. It might be coming from your lights, it might be coming from your stereos, it might be coming from your Wi-Fi. That's the world we're living in. 2018 not 1970. Some of you get freaked out when I talk about this stuff because quite frankly you feel inept. You feel that you can't do anything. You feel vulnerable. You feel powerless. You feel like you can't do it. I would suggest you change your attitude. I would suggest you start studying you're an adversary, so you'd know how, what to do. I would also suggest that you quit pitying yourself and get off your ass and start learning. Because all the things that I've talked about can be neutralized. You can protect yourself. That's the key. But the key is you have to first understand the nature of these things and what they're doing and how they do it. And that requires studying. That requires reading. That requires understanding how these things work so you know how to make them not work. Uh oh, what happened? Call dropped. Oh. Funny. Okay, I think we're back. All right, yeah, this is interesting. We start talking about these things, and all of a sudden, things start to happen. Yep, we're back. Cool. Yep. Yay! All righty. Um, again, as I was saying, these things can be negated and neutralized. But first, you have to understand really what you're dealing with. And you have to recognize that we're dealing with some things that we have to be aware of the here and now. That's part of being healthy. 
That's part of knowing how to protect your health and your genetic code. We are not living, like I said, in these places where you can just eat whatever and, you know, and everything's okay. You know, the organics don't mean a hill of beans today. I always tell people, go look at, go get a scope, any kind of scope, and go look at what you're actually eating. You might be surprised at the, what's on your food supply. You actually might really be surprised. You may actually be surprised at the metallic component. I had somebody tell me today, well, they're going to, you know, they were going to, um, juice and stuff and says well are you filtering the the juices are you taking the juices and you are uh you know um uh are you actually uh, doing something with it you know are you are you cleaning up the metals from the juicing and they, they just looked at me like i was strange so when we're looking at <laughs> when we're looking at what's going on today we have to recognize that just juicing is not going to be enough you have to literally strip these things off the, the plants out of the juices, the metals, the nano metals are in the stuff are going to be there, um, you know, and they they are going to, again, infiltrate your your system, and they're going to cause you problems, you know. Be aware of that, and the problems that they're going to cause you are going to be detrimental. They'll be accumulative, they'll build up, and they'll get lodged in the brain. When we're looking at some of the things that. Um, uh, Oh, I got to read this to you. This was interesting. Just to give you an idea. <laughs> just to give you an idea about organ. This is somebody who sent me an email. I'm not sure where they sent it from. I'm assuming it was the United States or Canada. Tony, God help us. I put scrambled eggs from chickens that was raised in my neighborhood, neighbor's backyard under a scope. She has been feeding them laying pellets and they roam freely. They were, they were, there were tube-like things with wires running through it in them, but the really creepy thing is they were moving. We've been eating these eggs. I've been feeding them to my grandchildren, thinking I was doing a good thing. I want to throw up. I just had to tell someone I knew would believe me and get, get it off my chest. Well, I do believe her because I'm dealing with this stuff. The kids and I have been taking the detox bath. I've also got the materials to make the anti-nano bucket. Once again, God bless you. Thanks. Okay. That's why you need to understand and study. This is why you have to get the fact that they are infiltrating you in ways you can't even begin to imagine. Okay. In your food supply. You know, it is what it is today. And you have to recognize what it is today. It's no longer... The, um, the theme of organics or clean eating. We have to look at neutralization now. You can't get this out. If the, if the chicken is eating whatever it's eating, and it's now getting into the eggs, the very core of the eggs, okay? Um, when you see that going on, then you got to start thinking, how do I neutralize this? What other options do I have available? So I keep telling everybody what goes up must come down. Okay. Those chemtrails are producing tiny little nanobots, swarms, little smart dust, smart sensors. This is going on everything. You're eating this in the, from the farmer's field. If they're putting smart dust or smart sensors, that doesn't wash out. Gets inside and it's still activating on whatever frequency it's activating. And then it can start changing the way your DNA functions. This is why we came up with the bucket. Why did we come up with the bucket? Why do we come up with the triangle? Now I got another thing coming up called the vortex. Why are we coming up with these things? Because you now have to understand that you're dealing with a synthetic biology, an integration of biology and nanotechnology that's a programmable operational system. And as long as the program is operating and functioning in these systems, it will continue to carry out, carry out its program. Okay, I hear the music, so come on back, and we're going to further figure out how to neutralize. All right, talk to you in a bit.
Hey everybody, welcome back. Welcome back to The Remedy. Hi, I'm your host, Tony Penn Teleresco. Okay, let's get into neutrality, shall we? Okay, we gotta eat this, we gotta eat, you gotta eat, you gotta eat. Okay, start getting greenhouse stuff. That may be, it'll be far, it'll still may have the nano, but it'll be maybe minimized. If you're gonna eat produce, try to grow it in, in your own. Um, cool. Uh, get, get, uh, try to grow your own stuff indoors, away from the outside. Minimize any outdoor exposure to whatever you're eating. If you can't do that, then you have to start consuming with the food you're eating. High levels of sulfur, high levels of phosphorus. High level, you may need to use things like sodium thiosulfate, uh, EDTA, DTPA, uh, pectin, charcoal to remove uh, what's going on. Uh, okay, Hardaway, yeah, that would happen. The kids will lose weight. So if there's any way you can get any kind of saturated fat to these kids, tallow, lard, butter, ghee, coconut oil, MCT oil, lanolin, get it into them because their cells are being broken down by the tech. <clears throat> and as long as they don't have the fat going back into them, the tech will break them down. Make sure they're not eating any kind of soy, canola, or any kind of omega-3. The omega-3s were designed to destroy the cellular integrity of our cells. That was all a bunch of hocus pocus from the health food industry. So make sure you get them on the good fat as much as you can, if you can get it to them. Um, even if you get them to consume a little peanut butter with no soy, the peanut butter has uh, phosphorus in it. And the phosphorus will help flush out whatever. If they're if they can mix a little butter with the peanut butter, that'll give them the saturated fat, the omega-6 fat, and the phosphorus to help expel whatever's inside the system and help clear them up. And if they can get some peanut oil, apply the peanut oil on the skin. Uh, it can help, again, draw out more of the stuff so their systems are not overloaded. Because if they don't do anything, eventually kidney failure will, will start to happen. Respiratory issues will increase and they'll start feeling mentally broken. They need the fat for the brain. Definitely. Okay, we're dealing with a technology that can self-assemble, self-replicate, self-repair. That means it has an operation system, a program operating system. That means in order to stop an operating system, you either have to know the code or know how to wipe out access to the code. What wipes out code? Magnetics. Understand the nature of electromagnetic pulses, electromagnetic field pulses, magnetic beams. Are you paying attention? Because this is how you're going to be able to defend yourself. When you get your foods, you may, we built a chamber. Go to buybuybluesky.com. Access the health link. Look at the Nano More Gallons link. Click on it. Scroll down. In there, you will see what looks to be a, co a green coiled uh, glass. That's a vase. I, I used a plant vase. Coil that up. That's got about 80 windings just so that you can see for yourself what's in the stuff you're consuming. Pour whatever you want to pour into that. Apple juice, orange juice, wine, grape juice, black currant juice, any kind of juice you like. Pour it in there. Get yourself a power supply, laptop power supply, and a car flasher. Hook up the car flasher and the power supply in a series, a series signal. In other words, uh, when you get the power supply, cut the end off. You'll have two wires. Add two alligator clips, one in each wire. So then you'll clip the the alligator clip to the power supply, the power supply, uh, the flasher unit to the other uh, power supply, and then connect the the wire to the jar to that one. So basically, you've got a complete circle. Put the power on. Put the juice on. Let it click. Let it pulse, and watch what comes out of the crap you're drinking. Even if you make homemade juice, okay, let's say you're, you're like me, you like berries. 
juice the berries, put them in that container, pulse them. Watch what comes out. That's accumulative. In other words, it, it takes time, but it builds up in the body, and you can't pee it out, you can't crap it out, you can't even sweat it out. It builds up, and it causes major breakdown. So we're creating what we're calling an EMF field, which pulses, which then shuts off the program in the food. And then you'll see the stuff float. Now, let's say you don't want to go through all that trouble. Okay? <laughs> yeah, I love drinking homemade nano. <laughs> let's say you don't have the power supply. All right, what you do then is you make the juice. Okay, you make the juice. Put it in the container, put, uh, put it in that, uh, uh, sorry, make the juice, put it in a blender. Get yourself some peanut oil. Teaspoon of peanut oil, because it's a cheap oil, because you're going to be throwing it away anyway. Then blend it in the blender for a minute. Okay? Blend it in the blender for a minute, and then pour that into a jar or a bowl or some kind of container, and then put that in the fridge. The oil and the water will separate. Once the oil and water separates, pour out the juice and then take the oil and put it under a microscope and see what you got. See what's in there. Take a real hard look. Some of you might say, well, this is freaking me out. You know what? Good. That means you're still alive. Okay? It means you're still alive. Pay attention because this is about subjugating you with a Trojan horse. These are Trojan horses. They get in and then they take over and you don't know what happened. Some of you can't remember how to tie your shoes anymore because your brains are not working properly. Why do you think that's happening? You get all this metal in your head from the food supply and then you're breathing the stuff in from the chemtrails. Sooner or later, the aluminum, the barium, the thorium, the, the uh, strontium, the titanium dioxide, the nano silver, the cadmium, the lead, and everything else that's up there, and the mercury, and the lithium, and the lithium, and the lithium. Are you getting that? The lithium? You know that red crap in the sky? You think it's a sunset and the sun turning the sky red and all that crap? That's lithium. Okay, that's lithium. And then you wonder why you can't remember your name and how to tie your shoes and pull up your socks. Then a lot of you can't, can't move. You're just feeling all achy and painful and your back is killing you and you can't hardly see. That's because the kidneys are overloaded with the nano and it's dumping it down in the lower back. This is why you need to take these baths and this is why you need to use the buckets and this is why you need to use the triangle because the triangles and the buckets will disarm these things by shutting them off with an EMF pulse that will turn off the program. And then once the program comes off, this stuff gets expelled out of you. Got videos on how to make the triangle. We got videos how to make the bucket. We even got on Wix and how to make the bucket. Make it. If you can't make it, find somebody that can help you make it. If you can make it and you got people around you that don't know how to make it, make it for them. Charge them accordingly. If you, you, know, you want to do it for free, that's up to you. But materials are expensive. Help out your neighbor because it's going to take a consortium of us that are going to still be standing that are free of this mess in order to be able to deal with what's coming down the pipe. Okay, guns and bullets are fine, but if you're going to be shooting them against a mechanized material that is literally uh, harder than whatever your whatever projectile is coming out of your gun, your gun is ain't going to be worth a hill of beans. You might want to learn how to make something along the lines that goes it has a bigger boom to it, <laughs> like thermite, <laughs> magnetic thermite. <laughs> Point is, you need to understand where what this is doing, what this is going, to, what's coming down here. Don't assume because these gurus out in the health food industry are still selling you some algae product like spirulina and bee pollen and and all this other happy horse hockey that this is going to do anything for you today. Let me t let me point out to you the bee pollen. Let's get into bee pollen and royal jelly and honey. How many of you have gotten honey straight from a farm? That's where I get mine. How many of you have actually looked at the honey lately? 
Notice it's a little bit different. Now imagine the pollen. Where is the pollen coming from? It's coming from the flowers that the bees are, are collecting. What's in that pollen? Pollens are proteins. What are in those proteins? Ooh, let's take a look with a scope. See what you see. You still think it's a health food. Like I said, these gurus or these bozos, call them Bozo the Clown. I don't know how many of you remember Bozo the Clown. Bozo the Clown was a cartoon uh, clown character when I grew up as a kid. He used to come on TV and look like some goofy alien from, from Pluto or something. And they called him Bozo the Clown. He acted so goofy and so stupid. Well, that's how I equate some of these gurus out there. Bozo the Clown because all they're propagating is BS. They're just making a dollar on you, and, they're, and they're basically because a lot of you don't read or study, you keep on with the same paradigm or the same system over and over, and the system has changed. Remember the old Bugs Bunny cartoon, I should have made the left at Albuquerque? Well, that's what they did. They made the left, and you're still going straight. You know, and you need to know how to defend. You need to know what you should be buying. If you're going to go to a health food store to buy any vitamins and any supplements or anything along those lines, get them in pure powder form. Whether they be amino acids, whether they be minerals, whether they be enzymes, whether they be antioxidants, get them in pure powdered form. If they've been put into a capsule, chances are, and it may not, it's not always the case, but chances are, uh, probably I'd say 9 out of 10 chances, those pills will have been contaminated with some kind of excipient. Don't buy any product in the health food industry that says nano. I don't care what it says. C uh, copper, gold, silver, platinum, iridium, or it says monatomic either. That's all nano. That will penetrate and bypass the blood-brain barrier, get lodged in your brain, and cause you problems. Somebody wrote me something today, and I couldn't believe the guy actually wrote this to me. He says to me, what do you think about lithium orotate? He says, I don't. Don't use it. You're getting all the lithium you want or could use from the atmosphere. But he said, this is a natural lithium, not synthetic. I said, really? He says, when is lithium not synthetic? <laughs> it's a mineral. Again, I don't know where he got this information. And again, I don't, I don't uh, necessarily blame the person. He just doesn't know. But he doesn't study either. Don't assume anything in this industry. The word assume means making an ass out of you and me. That's what it really means. Don't assume nothing. Read. Read the excipients. Read the, uh, the other ingredients. Read the components in what you're buying. Because if you don't read these components and you're assuming that what you're taking is safe, and don't listen to Dr. Guru, who's trying to tell you that, micro, uh, that uh, magnesium stearate is a danger. It's not a danger. Magnesium stearate is what your heart uses. It uses both magnesium and steric acid. And steric acid comes from uh, lard or tallow. It's the other components, the microcrystalline cellulose, the hypercarmalose, the cross-carmalose, the silicon dioxide, the uh, artificial natural flavors, the soy, the AVP, HVP, TVP. These are the things that are causing the problems. We just, I just read the article earlier about soy boy. Soy boy in the military can't even throw a grenade. The distance of about 75, 80 feet. And they're, in fact, they're going to do away with the... <laughs> <laughs> with the training. Well, they said they're going to keep training them, but it's not during that time. <laughs> These guys are going in the military. If they put them out in the field, they are going to get wiped out. They're going to be slaughtered. How many of you have sons and daughters in the military or thinking about it? They may be with people who are incapable of defending themselves and then, and then jeopardizing your bloodline. You might want to have a talk with them. There's other ways to serve the country other than going out there with a bunch of people that they're going to slaughter because they can't defend themselves because they can't even throw a simple hand grenade 80 feet. Wow. <laughs> that is indicating... This is Rome all over again, but worse. 
This is one of the things that caused the Roman Empire to fall. The military became a joke. We're way past that. <laughs> way past that. This is why North Korea can, you know, I, I understand why North Korea built their bombs. I don't blame the guy, but I mean, think about it. A little country like that will now make a comment to the United States where 30 years ago they never would have thought of saying boo. Again, things are different because we know they're all, they're all in cahoots. We know the guy in Korea and the guy in, in Washington, the guy in Canada, the guy in, in England, the guy in France, they're all together. They're all working out a plan. The guy in China, the guy in Russia, they're all together. We know that. It's a show. But seriously, the show ends when it comes right down where the rubber meets the road where, where you live. Okay, that's what I'm pointing out. So these are things you need to do to prepare, to be prepared, to understand what you're dealing with and how to deal with what you're dealing with, okay? Learn to grow your own stuff. Learn to quit being dependent on the system. You know, getting off the grid means seriously, do it in steps. But your food supply should be the first thing you should be eliminating from the system. The system has no food. It's just leftover pseudo food, fake food. The, the, the new effort on the internet was called fake. You know, fake off, fake you, fake food. And this is what we got. We got fake food. <laughs> and the food that's, because it's fake, has all kinds of unwanted surprises in it that can cause your DNA to literally come undone. Yay, how about that? How does that sound? You eat, you're thinking about eating an apple and you're thinking the apple has health benefits because you read all this information about apples having all these antioxidants and all these wonderful properties and how it fights cancer, it can do this and can do that. But they didn't tell you this little tidbit of information that goes with that, that if the apple is contaminated with certain specific components, that the pectin in the apple may actually deliver more of it in the intestinal tract. You know, they, didn't t they left out that little detail. You know. Or you're eating an orange. An orange has a lot of magnesium and potassium to it and, and, and very little vitamin C. Not a whole lot of vitamin 50 milligrams per apple or per orange. About the same for grapefruit. But it does got to ha have a high level of citric acid and then a high level of magnesium, high level of potassium, and some other bioflavonoids. And they tell, oh, the, the orange is really good for you and, and, and you know has antioxidant properties and blah, blah, blah. But they don't tell you that when you combine citric acid with these nanometals, that the citric acid can deliver more of these metals into your tissue. And the higher levels of aluminum in the orange that's being sprayed can now displace the magnesium and the potassium out of your body, causing a magnesium and potassium deficiency. They don't tell you that, do they? See, this is where you have to go past a one-dimensional type thinking. You have to understand that you're living in 2018, and a lot of the information that we're reading today, dating back to anywhere from 10 to 20 years, 30 years, doesn't pertain anymore because of the different exposure to some of the elements that these foods are exposed to today. They weren't exposed to chemtrail activity 30 or 40 years ago like today. They weren't being sprayed with glyphosates and other harmful nanoparticles or nanometals in the field either. They weren't being stored, or they may have been stored with uh, other things, but today they're even being stored with a sulfuryl fluoride. Sulfuryl fluoride is a sulfur with a fluoride mixture combined, when the sulfur then will take and deliver more of that fluoride into your body, shutting down your thyroid. How many of you got thyroid issues? Think about it. All right, before I go on, I always talk about the Micro Effect Broadcasting Network. I would encourage you to support the network, support the station. Give them whatever you can. Help them out any way you can. Uh, keep them going. Keep them flowing. You got ByeByeBlueSky.com. You got Gag Canada. You got me here down here in Windsor as well. Um, again, go to Bye Bye Blue Sky. Check out the site. Uh, we're going to be at the Green Show again April 6th through 8th, I believe. So again, if you're going to come around, say hi. Hey, we're going to you know, so come and meet us and, see, and show your support and show us that you're doing something. That would be really cool. Hey, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Yay. So come on down. 
Uh, again, go to buybluesky.com. Go to my site, uh, augmentedforce.com. Check out the information on the nano uh, information that's there, the synthetic biology. Learn how to prepare yourself. Learn the nature of how these things uh, disable you. Learn the nature of how they can corrupt your DNA. You know, this is really important that you understand so you know how to defend. And if you freak out, no problem. It's a good thing. You'll get over it. You'll start developing wonderful ideas that will come up with to help you become, stay healthy and to be able to be on the offensive. Yeah, and that's how you have to think. Again, go to the site, uh, check out the catalog link. There's lots there. You got the triangle, you got the bucket, you got the flash drive, you got the t-shirts, you've got the um, uh, repellers, uh, uh, repulsors, you got the gr grounding units. Feel free to check things out. We've also got books on DVD. Again, I would encourage you to look at the books. They're very good. They'll be very informative. They'll show you a lot of things. So again, if you're interested in consultations, I also do those as well. So again, 519-977-5351 or independence at yahoo.com. All right. I think I probably rattled enough of your chains today. And I'm, I'm trying to help you get prepared. Build that arc. You know, get you to build your arc. Start thinking in terms of self-sufficiency. And even with energy, start thinking. And don't look at the conventional things that they're talked about with solar and somebody else and wind. Those things may be good, but come up with something even better. Don't allow a one-dimensional thought. What I mean by one-dimensional thought is you read something and you just follow it thinking that this is the only option available or the only way to do something that's one-dimensional thinking start advancing your and broadening your knowledge base start doing research start watching YouTubes start watching uh, other videos and other people that are doing stuff T take their ideas make them better improve upon them you might be surprised what you may come up with and then if you want to, share the information with everybody around you or people that are interested, you know. Uh, you might be surprised at how big your networks will grow with each other and how you'll be able to help each other even more effectively than when you're doing it on your own. You will be surprised. You'll be surprised at some of the people you'll meet from all walks of life, from all forms of ideologies, which will have a commonality in regarding to doing something and getting things going. You may not agree with everybody's belief systems. That's not a big deal. But what you all have in common, you got to remember, Christians are being killed with this. Catholics are being killed with this. Protestants are being killed with this. Yeah, those of the Judaic faith are being killed with this. Those of the Islamic faith are being killed with this. Those with the Hindu faith, the Buddhist faith. Any ideology, belief systems, whatever, is under these skies are being killed. Doesn't matter the race, color, whatever. We're all being killed. Okay. Don't get into this concept of, oh, isn't it killing these guys that are doing it too? Who cares? Who cares? They're killing you. That's what, who you, what you should be concerned about. They're killing your bloodlines. They're killing your genetic code. They're terminating you and your families. That's what you should be concerned about. And if you're freaking over that, good. You'll get over it. They don't care about you. If they did care about you, they wouldn't be poisoning our skies. They wouldn't be poisoning our land. They wouldn't be poisoning our water. They wouldn't be selling farmers chemicals that would cause genetic damage to, to the people or to whatever ate these things, would they? They wouldn't be producing, uh, wouldn't be just keeping us in a state of producing cars and burning petrol products that continue to poison the planet. They would have already come up with a better way of producing a means of transportation that would have been eco-friendly. They don't care. They don't care. So it's going to be up to you to care. Care for yourself, care for your friends, your families, and your networks. That's all you've got. That's all you got. They don't care. Look at everything you're buying today, every consumable good you are buying today, and you will find some kind of poison attached to it. Nano silver is in your underwear, which causes male sterility, which causes the shredding of the testicle, testicles of the male population. They're putting titanium dioxide in your candies, which causes, again, male sterility for the males. 
causing, again, testicular damage and cancers. They're putting aluminum in a lot of things, which causes, uh, uh, again, hormonal damage to women and genetic damage to women. They're dumping barium on us. They're dumping thorium and strontium on us. What do you think that's doing to your genetic code? You know, there is no, uh, they don't care. Did they, according to the United States, they're supposed to ask the population before they can run any tests on them whether it's okay to do this. Were you ever asked to consent to being experimented on by chemtrail fallout? Were you, did you, were you consented or did you give your consent to have your food supply sprayed with metallic materials and other genetically damaging materials and endocrine de destroying materials for your food supply? Did you consent to this? If you said no, then you're not responsible. They are. If you said no to the chemtrailing of the skies, then you're not responsible. They are. Have a real hard look at what you're buying. All your cons even your toilet paper has got some kind of phytolate in it, which is a basically a synthetic estrogen. It's got silica in it, which causes, again, a lot of the hemorrhoids, a lot of your feeling is from your toilet paper because those tiny little particles have permeated into the blood vessels and causing inflammation in the anal area. Again, think about what everything you're buying. All those plastic tub containers are all xenoestrogenically based containers which will cause cancers for most women and men. Why aren't we using glass anymore? We used to. When we used glass, the women never got sick. Not with these issues. Now we got away from glass and got into plastic, all of a sudden everybody's got cancer. Whoa, hey, what's going on there? Remember that? How many of you remember that everything came in glass? Remember your milk used to come in a glass container? Not a plastic jug or a plastic bag? Remember that? Remember your orange juice used to come into a glass container? I'm giving you a, sort of an idea how ancient I am. You used to have a paper, a paper top that you peeled off, not some plastic lid. Remember that? Had a wax seal. Remember that? Nobody got sick during those times, not like today. Remember that? See, back then, things were different. And that's just one little tiny difference that I'm showing you that we that was different, that made a difference in our health. All right, I hear the music. Listen, thanks for tuning in. Till next week, okay? Start solving some issues and think about what I said and check out the site. Learn. Be prepared. All right. Take care, eh?